So this video goes out to Caviar, um, and what they're trying to understand is if you have a large data set, like a million rows, how do you know if there's duplicates or not in the data set? Right now, I've dealt with this problem, and anyone who starts dealing with larger data sets, you start seeing that um, handling duplicates is actually really difficult. It's almost like its own subject. How to deal with duplicates, unique, when they generate, when they don't generate, when they're missing, left, right, joint. There's a lot of little things you got to do, right? But let's cover the first topic of basically a million rows. I'm going to probably skip the union thing because once you've done the union, that's probably when you get duplicates or when you do a join. So let's talk about that part. So what I've done is I've created a data set here with a million rows, like literally a million rows. And what I've done is I've just created two duplicates, five and six. Now the thing is, if it's somewhere in here, right, so <laughs> you're never going to find it just looking at it one by one unless you get super lucky. Right now, a million is kind of considered small in some circles, right? What happens if you have a billion, right? It, it gets really, really difficult once you get really dark, uh, large sets. Now, programs like Alteryx or Tableau Prep, actually Tableau Prep probably wouldn't even be able to handle more than several millions of rows, so forget that. Alteryx, yes, you can do it, but again, you need Alteryx, which is like $10,000 a license. Um, so the question is, how do you do it in Tableau? All right, what I've done is I've loaded up this data set into Tableau. Let's have a look. All right, so I've basically just got row ID. Okay, and we're trying to figure out, well, are there duplicates? And this is only showing me the first 10,000, hence why it looks a bit small. Now, the problem is, if I drop row ID in here, it's probably going to freeze it. Right? It's Actually, let's full screen this because you have to display a million rows. And that's not really how Tableau was designed. Tableau is designed for aggregate views, you know, the sum of this grouped in a certain way. So how do you see the duplicates without having to display everything? Well, there's a little trick. Okay. So in row ID, we're going to do a count of the row ID. So if I right click, drag that into filters, right, we're going to go sum. Sorry, not sum. We're going to count. I just said it. So we're going to go here, we're going to go count, right? And here in the at least, we're going to see how many exist more than uh, more than once. So at least two. But the thing is with the count, because we haven't displayed anything, it's just going to count the full um, column, which is just how many rows, right? So it's a bit misleading. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to change this to two and go OK, right? So nothing's happened yet. But the cool thing is it's applying the filter before we've displayed anything already. That means when we display something, it will automatically be filtered rather than doing it the other way around. If you display then filter, you're using way more memory on your computer and you're going to be waiting around. It's the same deal with like, um, let's say you have, uh, yeah, it's like with dates, let's say you have a lot of dates and you just want to go, well, I just want it in years. So instead of putting it in years directly, you're going, let me see it as individual days and then I'll right click modify to year, which is what you don't. And that's very time consuming, right? So getting back to this, we can see that it's at two. And if I drop row ID in here, I should only see five and six. So you can see how quick that was because it's pre-filtered before it goes in. Right? If I do it the other way, maybe for a million it might be okay. See that? It's thinking. See? Computing. Now, a million is, again, really small. What if it was a billion? It probably wouldn't even display. Right? There you go. So that took a little while. Now, you're probably thinking, well, a few seconds, who cares? Right? But this is kind of an ideal situation because you rarely have a data set where it's just one column. All right. So let's say probably on average, the data sets I do is let's say 15 columns. You're talking 15 million data points. Now, a lot of the times it's much larger than a million. Let's say it's 10 million. All right. You're doing like 150 million data points. It probably will take half an hour or 45 minutes, maybe even an hour sometimes. So you want a way to just skip that entire sequence. Now, this is kind of the difference between kind of experts and beginners, you know, because you know these little tricks that will help you design faster. Now, why is this important? Well, when you're working with a client, right? So let's talk about it in the business world. They go, listen, let's have a meeting. You have the meeting and they go, we're going to give you guys a few days to figure out how to do this, right? Figure out if you're going to send us something. 
if you can build something in like five minutes after a meeting and send it, they're going to be like, holy crap, you know, and it's not just to impress them, right? The idea is to show that, wow, this is how quickly we can design for you. Give them that really great experience because give them a good experience. You can sign on another client, right? Or they're more willing to work with you, share information, get more involved and invested in the project, right? There's all these little things that this helps with. So in addition to that, let's say you're competing with several other people. You can design 10 times faster than them because while they're still waiting for things to load, you're already kind of through your visualization. You're already building results. And by the time you've gotten your first set of feedback, they're delivering their first one, right? So this is kind of the competitive edge that you start developing when you get to kind of this level of skill, right? So anyways, I can go all day about that stuff. Um, but that is basically how I would do a pre-filter to count duplicates, right? And you would kind of do the opposite if you wanted to see uniques, right? So let's say you had more duplicates than uniques. Let's clear this. I would go row ID. You would still do count, but instead of it going at most, um, at, mo uh, at least two, you would go to the at most one, right? Because you only want ones that exist once. And that's how you would do your uniques, okay? And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed. Um, Kavya, I hope that answers your question. And have a good day, guys.